A model steamboat named Edith. Part 20. Cladding the boiler. The first part of the job is to remove the fittings on top of the boiler. Although I could clad the boiler quite easily without removing the fittings, I don't want to damage them with sandpaper, nor do I want to get any varnish on them. As there was quite a lot of water in the boiler, I emptied this out, and here's the boiler on the bench, ready for the cladding process. A couple of weeks back, I bought a lot of mahogany, and this mahogany is good stuff, but it's a bit too wide for this application. So, I'm cutting it down using my small bandsaw. It doesn't take too long, although with this bandsaw at the moment, the blade is fairly blunt. And here's a good tip, always use a block of wood to hold the piece being cut firmly against the guide. If you don't do that, it will wander about as you're cutting it, and you will not get a straight edge. The original mahogany strips are two metres long, which is a good bit longer than I've ever bought them before, and I'm not complaining because the price was very good. And because the original mahogany strip was so long, about three quarters of the way through the job, I had to turn it over and cut it from the other end. Time now to mark out just one piece of the cut mahogany, and then it's back over to the bandsaw to duplicate this as many times as I can. Another good tip is when cutting mahogany like this, always cut it on its end. That way, the ends remain square. If you cut it flat, the piece that you are cutting will probably wobble about a bit, and the end will therefore be uneven. So here is the end result. Enough cladding to cover the boiler. Some viewers may be thinking, well, why do you need to put cladding on this boiler? It's down in the depths of the boat and will never be seen. Well, I'm putting the cladding on the boiler because originally the boiler was also clad in mahogany with a bit of asbestos thrown in the mix. So I carefully removed the asbestos and there's not a trace of it left. At this point, I'd just like to say I'm no expert on asbestos, but when I remove it, I always remove it in a wet state. I put the boiler in a bowl of water. First of all, I remove the mahogany strip, followed by the asbestos, which is obviously very wet, so it's not going to blow about everywhere. It's also a good idea to wear a small breathing mask when doing jobs like this. It's good to take no chances whatsoever. This is a very old boiler in a very old boat, so it was definitely asbestos underneath the original mahogany. I know that to be true because it tasted like asbestos and it smelt like asbestos. By the way, that was an attempt to joke. I'm shaping the first piece of mahogany to go onto the boiler and I'm not using any asbestos or even the modern substitute for asbestos underneath the cladding. Because as I mentioned earlier, the cladding isn't really necessary on a boiler of this size. But in this clip that's been running for a while, I'm trimming the first piece of mahogany to go on the boiler. If you don't fit this first plank at a perfect 90 degrees to the boiler end plates, you will run into trouble later on when you fit the rest of the planking. I've made videos about doing this job before, as usual, I'm using a small drum sander fitted to my Minicraft drill. Making this first plank is the most difficult part. The cutouts in the mahogany strip need to be precisely in the right position for it to look right. And as I mentioned before, the strip when fitted needs to be at 90 degrees to the end of the boiler. You could use a T-square to check this, I just use my eyes. There now follows a gluing extravaganza. My adhesive of choice for this is cyanoacrylate adhesive, also known as CA glue or super glue. And here's yet another good tip. When you cut the ends of the planks to fit around things on the boiler, like bushes or the chimney, always do it at a slight angle, because if you look at the bushes on the boiler, you will notice a fillet of solder at the base of the bush. So if you cut the wood square, it will be held off the bush by the solder around it. With the first mahogany plank in place, it's time to fit the second one, and I'm now putting adhesive on the boiler to fit the third one. And this third mahogany plank is the first one that runs the full length of the boiler. So after this one, the job is going to become a lot simpler. Well, for a short while anyway. This part of the sequence has been running in real time, but now I have to speed it up, because otherwise the video will be far too long. The entire job took about an hour and a half in total. You will notice some green masking tape on the top of the boiler, temporarily holding the planks in place. This is not intended to be a tip. I use the masking tape for the first few planks only to hold them in place. I would normally use an elastic band for this, but I didn't have any. So I used masking tape, and I wish I hadn't have done, because the masking tape sticks very well to the cyanoacrylate adhesive on the top of the mahogany. However, here is a top tip when you're doing this job. You need to sand as you go. Because you're sticking these pieces of mahogany around a tube, obviously 
there are gaps in between the mahogany because of the geometry of the thing. And also, these gaps are full of cyanoacrylate adhesive, which is generally still wet. So after fitting, say, five planks, use some 100 grit sandpaper to sand down the top of the mahogany. And what happens is the fine powder generated by the sanding process falls into the gaps where it immediately sticks to the surplus cyanoacrylate adhesive and fills the gaps. Simple, really. After going down one side of the boiler to the underside, I turned the boiler around and now it's time to fit the fiddly bits at the top. Sanding the mahogany around the bushes is also a good idea, as once again the fine mahogany particles created by the sanding will fill any gaps between the mahogany and the bushes. So once again, here we go, all the way down the other side. I'm getting a bit bolder on this side and putting sufficient adhesive on the boiler to stick quite a few planks down in one go. But do be careful when doing this because sometimes if you put say four planks on and push them together they suddenly jump over each other, fall onto the bench and fall onto your trousers or your t-shirt. Health and safety warnings and these are important ones really. Cyanoacrylate adhesive gives off very very strong fumes. Always do jobs like this in a very well ventilated area. Also it's a good idea to wear eye protection. In fact it's essential to wear eye protection. I can't think of anything worse than getting some cyanoacrylate adhesive in my eye. Apart from a javelin, that wouldn't be too good either. This is a tin of premium thinner, and this stuff apparently is called lacquer thinner if you live in the USA. I'm using this stuff to remove the paint from the rudder because it was badly chipped. I don't need to use premium thinner, or thinners as I normally call it, because I'm only using it to remove paint, but standard thinner smells really horrible so I generally try and buy the premium stuff, it smells a bit nicer. And before any viewers write in and start off with the immortal words, are you aware that... Well, yes I am. I did the job, I videoed the job, then I sat and digitally edited the job, now I'm voicing it over, so any problems I do see, so I'm fairly aware. And in this case, I'm quite aware that the shaft of the rudder is bent. The boat was built like that and bent it's going to stay. That's the way the builder got the rudder to line up with the actual hole in the main boat and the keel extension underneath it. And in case you're also wondering why I put this feature about cleaning the paint off the rudder in the middle of a video about cladding the boiler, it was to allow sufficient time to elapse so that I could rub the boiler down with an orbital sander, and now as you can see it's quite smooth, and then varnish the boiler. I'm using Ron Seal Outdoor Varnish. This is spirit-based varnish, it is not water-based. Normally I would apply varnish to a boiler like this using a cloth, but in this case I wanted to try out my new paintbrush. This is a small flat paintbrush, I bought it from the model shop Leeds, and it is an amazing brush. I'll be doing a lot of painting with this, in fact, the next time I go there I will buy some more I think. When doing a job like this, don't forget to seal the edge of the mahogany as well. Don't be confused by this varnish, I know it looks brown, but it isn't. It isn't one of these self-coloured varnishes, this is a clear gloss varnish. So, I don't know why it's brown. For the first half of this video, I noticed I had a black mark on the back of my hand. That's because I was messing about doing some work under the lathe, and it's quite grimy and oily under there. And seeing this whilst editing the video, I thought I'd better mention that a viewer a few weeks back wrote in and said, your fingernails are very dirty, I think you need a pedicure. So I thought, oh, okay, so I went and had a pedicure, but my hands looked exactly the same. Because I make one of these videos almost every day, it's quite difficult to keep my hands clean and in very good condition. I don't like wearing gloves, because I find that dangerous in the workshop. But looking on the bright side, my feet look better than they have done for several years. To conclude this episode, I'm just going to leave you with this image of the varnish drying. And that's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.